Hey, TGIF, right? My goodness. Look, even my uh, phone's happy. It's uh, Friday. How's everybody doing tonight? It feels a lot like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? Uh, I think we tried to do this yesterday and it didn't work very well. But uh, it actually did work very well because we had a good show with both uh, Micah and Nick and Dino for those uh, Comic Connect preview and a Heritage recap with a new format and a twist. It worked out pretty good. So uh, so I'm glad everybody could make it here tonight. I was almost going to do it last night as far as like working it through another hour of this. And I just I couldn't do it. It's been, uh, been a lo- it's a long week, right? Having uh, the, the Neil Adams show on Monday. That show lasted three and a half hours went all the way, you know, well past midnight and then uh, shows Tuesday, thir- you know, Wednesday, Thursday. I just couldn't do it. So nice to see, you know, as many here as there are, because I wasn't really expecting too many people to turn up, tune in tonight, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So I'm going to go through the calf update as quick as I can. It's Friday night. You, you should be hanging out doing something uh, fun tonight. I don't. I, I actually played cards with the family. It's one of my most hated games that uh, they have because every time we play it, I, I don't understand the rules. So I'm always at a disadvantage. It's called uh, Flux. If, I don't know if you ever uh, played it, two X's at the end. It's uh, it's confusing. I don't understand the rules. Every time I, I just say, I play a card and they tell me what I'm supposed to do. So, uh, but it's a fun game, sort of. I usually win, that's the weird thing. And uh, for a game I don't understand, that's a plus. Uno is, uh, we do play a lot of Uno too, Marcus. But uh, yeah, Flux is the uh, the game around here. That one and uh, gosh, I can't even remember the other one. There's variations on Flux that they play. At any rate, so I want to go through the uh, the calf update as best as I can, and I give everybody a general overview of what you uh, would have heard last night. So first off, I know many people were wondering what happened at the end of uh, Dueling Dealers on Wednesday. So clearly Anthony won, but we just we could not keep up with the uh, with the, with the scores, the sales going on, and everything. So at the end of the day, Anthony won. He had 17 out of 20 sales. So really good night for him. $32,275 in sales. And uh, Mike ended up with 11 sales out of 20. And he had $20,600 in sales. So still pretty solid. And uh, of course, if the that one sale didn't go through, that one $12,000 sale for Anthony, then Mike would have won by $325. So it was pretty uh, pretty fun, but uh, too, too hard to keep track of. That was... Uh, I wouldn't want to do that every single week, but it was a good time, you know, definitely a good time. And uh, we, we, were, we were laughing a lot after it was all over. So uh, you can at least uh, appreciate that. But I, I do. Uh, that was a fun show. I'm so glad that everybody was able to hang out uh, to the end of it and make it as fun as it was. Because, uh, yeah, a little interjection of fun into that show at times is just good by the audience. I mean, it wouldn't have been the same without all of you there. Let's see. Oh, gosh. Sorry, just reading a couple things in the chat there. But so uh, so there you go. And uh, Andrew had fun. That's good. Everybody had fun. Hi, Hydra. We were just emailing. Nice to see you here. I'm glad we got that all that straightened away. It was an odd night. I, I tried to do too much yesterday. Uh, typically, I think, you know, clearly both of those shows could have been standalone shows. I definitely owe it to Micah to give him whatever time he needs to show off the artwork he wants. And uh, I've already told him, as soon as he gets the uh, the next auction on the schedule and he knows the closing dates, we'll set him up with his own date and own show for a Comic Connect preview. It'll make it a bit more relaxing, I think. And uh, and then we'll see what we do with the Heritage Recaps going forward. I still like the old format, although I know that uh, everybody liked the, uh, the new thing we did. I think we can do a mix of it, but uh, we're all going to talk about it and try to figure out how to make the Heritage Recaps more enjoyable uh, all around. So... Uh, uh, am I going to talk about my heritage picks? Yes, I am. I do have uh, 10 picks as well. So, yeah, we can talk about those. Don't have to do the XP. I didn't get the chance to watch the show. I hope that uh, some of you guys did. I uh, I meant to turn it on, but then we were playing cards, so I, I couldn't watch it. But I'm, I'm sure uh, Nick had a great show this evening. So uh, let me go through a couple things here. Um, I, well, I'm not even sure where I should start. You know, I've got a partial uh, flip for everybody. Lee, Lee Parmeter, uh, Lee P on calf sent in a it was like a 20 minute flip so lots of good stuff in it but i didn't want to show a full 20 minute flip here on the show so what i've done is i've queued i've basically saved the full version and it will go live on sunday on the channel but i've got a i think it's about an eight minute version of the flip tonight maybe a little bit longer it says it's nine so uh so why don't we go ahead and show that kind of break the ice tonight with a with a weekly flip we haven't had a flip in a couple weeks, and just so everybody knows, I have no flips and no cribs 
on the schedule next week. No one's submitted anything. So if anybody would like to, uh, you know how to reach me, Bill at ComicCardFans.com, and we'll set you up with these specs that I'd like to get for uh, these flips and the Cap Cribs videos. So let me go ahead and show Lee's, uh, again, half of his flip. And uh, I know you're going to enjoy it. Hi, my name is Lee, and this is my flip. As you can see, my um, some of my pieces are a little oversized in my portfolio, and I do like to adorn my portfolio with a little bling, including some uh, a dueling dealers sticker. Okay, we're going to start off. Um, this piece is uh, resident to my book. Um, and it's uh, by Eddie Barrows, I think a very um, under-acknowledged artist. Beautiful cover to War of the Superman number four. Um, there's 104 Kryptonian Supermen on that page, on that, uh, on that cover, if you can believe it. Next. This is um, Raphael... Albuquerque um, from American Vampire, the first issue. So it's a um, the first appearance of both of the characters, and it's actually the first time where they're speaking with each other. I did get this on one of the um, amateur dueling dealers um, pages from Matt Kennedy. Thanks, Matt. Next, I have a uh, Robin number twelve. Cover by Tom Grummet, uh, inks by Ray uh, Chrisling. Um, and I just had this delivered to me by uh, one of the comic art fan members, Michael, just a few days ago. Really happy with that. I don't do too many commissions, and this is actually, this is a commission I bought second hand from somebody so it's really not my commission but it's um jk woodward a nice image of uh batman and commissioner gordon in the uh the bat signal in the snow across across from that i got a nice mike perkins um captain america cover it's from i believe uh the 75th anniversary it's got a whole ton of characters on there, including both the Golden Age and the Modern Age Captain America. Lots to look at on there. Beautiful page. Um, somebody that left us way too early, Tommy Castillo um, on Detective Comics number 781. Um, just some nice images on there, and I wanted to mention him. You don't see his name around too much anymore since he's been gone. Inks by uh, Wade Von Grauberger. Grauberger? I, I, I'm sorry if I destroyed his name. Across from that, I have um, it's a Dead Man, Dead Again, from issue number two. And it's um, sort of uh, uh, revisiting the death of uh, um, Jason Todd as Robin. And it's done by Jim Aparo, the original artist. So that's pretty cool because I know I would never be able to get one of those original pages. Um, inks on this one are by Rick Burchett. Over here, I've got a Trinity number 45 splash by Mark Bagley, uh, inks by Art Thiebert. This is um, a little odd because it's not our normal, you know, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. It's a couple of characters called Atman, who's pretty much getting, like, killed right here. He's filling in for Batman, I guess. Uh, 
Diana Truth Queen and um, Kal-El, which sounds similar to Kal-El. Um, I don't have that comic, so I'll have to read this one to see exactly what's going on. But just some nice imagery from Mark. Really super heroic. And when you got um, some super villains like that coming through, it's, you can't lose. We've got a Satanist um, page from Action Comics number 680 by uh, Jackson Guis and Dennis Rodier. Just a really uh, cool layout, these three vertical panels. I thought it was pretty neat. And I've got, um, I got a kick out of this. Um, I really enjoyed the Gotham Central series. Um, this is uh, Steve Lieber, who really, I think, might have only done this issue, number 37. But I just got the biggest kick out of um, the villain that he put in here, the fisherman. Um, so kind of kind of funny, ridiculous. Um, first, a comic that was actually, you know, pretty much a crime drama. So I'm going to pull this one out. This is some licensing art for the Batmobile. Um, pencil is done by um, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez and the, and the pencils are nicer than the inks. The inks are nice but the pencils are so much more detailed on this. You gotta love him. He did such a great job on all this licensing art. Not sure who did the inks on this one. I'll throw that to the side. Next, we got a, a Gene Colon uh, Phantom Zone number three, inks by Tony DiZaniga. Um, I'm not sure if Gene actually ever did Superman besides this book. I mean, he did Batman, he did Spectre. I mean, most people know him from his Marvel, but you know, like a lot of like things that he's really. Good at it. you got that on that third panel. You got that spooky looking Viking guy with the me melting face. Very cool. Uh, I was Mike Allred, Batman, Meet the Avengers number two. I was always a big fan of the uh, the Avengers TV show. A lot of young people may not necessarily know who they they are. It was not the Avengers superheroes, of course, but um, a black and white TV show that's. Brought over here from England. Starred Emma Peel. Um, or at least Emma Peel's the, the character name. <laughs> Trying to remember um, who the uh, actress was. But nonetheless, we got Batman on here. And Robin and Catwoman being picked up by this uh, pretty neat looking retro mechanical giant. This is a, a Superman's uh, 60th anniversary splash page by um, Manuel Garcia. I think he's a little, known a little more for some of his Marvel work. But you pretty much got, you know, a lot of different versions of Superman in here. Superboy, um, Erad Eradicator, you got... Um, Super, um, Supergirl in there, Cyborg Superman, a few others. Looks like, like either Superman Blue or Red. Across from that, I've got a nice, I think my cheat sheets. I've got a nice, um, Superman Daily by Wayne Boring. Really kind of cool. From the year I was born, that was kind of neat. Um, uh, 92164. That middle panel with uh, Superboy in there. It's from a flashback. It's, it's pretty cool. Lots of zip tone on there. All right. So there you have 
the preview for it. The other uh, 10 uh, to 12 minutes will be a part of the premiere on, what time is it going to be? It's 2 p.m. on Sunday. So you can watch the rest of it. So yeah, it's a really good flip. That, uh, that Perkins cap cover was pretty darn amazing. And I did like that strip at the end too. <clears throat> Anything uh, from that era is definitely very awesome. So uh, thank you to Lee for doing that. And uh, definitely check it out on Sunday when I drop the rest of it. Uh, I figured I'd I would have done it today. I had to reschedule it to put it out on Sunday because of the way the schedules worked. But uh, but hey, it's nice to see Colin in the chat. Colin is going to be taking a vacation, a much needed vacation from Cap. He hasn't had one for uh, the two years that he's been working for us. So he is uh, long overdue for a vacation. Beginning next week, Colin will be, uh, I think Wednesday, he'll be gone for a full week. So I'll be taking over the editorial duties while he's gone. Hopefully I can live up to his uh, wonderful writing and every daily email that he puts uh, all that effort into. So so we'll see if I can at least, uh, you know, sort of live up to uh, the standard that he has set for us on, the, on those calf daily mailings, but I'll try. Uh, I think what's going to be worse is just all the news postings that I'm going to have to do and try to keep up with because Colin does such a darn good job on all of that as well. So uh, Colin, I hope you have a good time. <laughs> I really do. And you should, and you should not wait two years to take the next one after this one too. I know, I know you, uh, he, he actually did have a vacation about six months ago and he worked over it too. So shouldn't be doing that. We, uh, we need to work out a proper vacation schedule around here at Collectors Network. So I will try. We'll try to try to work, do something more proper as we become more official around here. So, uh, and I've got some official things to talk about uh, later, but you know, I've, I'm just going to run through my, my list here of things. I wanted to, I know I, I kind of teased the artwork for, for the Oming art drop tomorrow, yesterday. And I let everybody know that I would uh, show off some of the artwork from Next Comic Art tonight, too. And I don't really have, I don't have nice scans yet from Jiggy. He just sent me a bunch of photographs. And so I'm going to go ahead and just share those with you now. And, uh, you know, I've got a show on Monday at 9 p.m. with, with uh, Jiggy. So he's, he's, and I can't even tell you all the artists that are going to be participating in that. He has not given me the list of uh, artists and hasn't got me all the scans yet. I'll probably have all of that on Sunday. But, uh, but, you know, those shows are fun, and typically the artworks that uh, he has in there, you know, I'd say the majority of them are commission uh, style pieces, you know, ranging from anywhere from like, what, like 250 to 700, 750, if somewhere around in there, and then he usually throws in some published work that is part of an art drop, although I can't guarantee that's what's going to happen. But so what he's shown me so far is uh, this piece here. Let's see if we can look at all the rest of them here. Why are you not scrolling for me? figures I try to launch that and it wouldn't work let's see I can just drop these in here I think uh, replace there you go so there's another uh, nice Batman piece and oh I can show off this one too that's gonna be a published cover of course and uh, these next few pieces are all uh, let's see just commission style pieces I'm not sure who did that because he didn't really name it. He just called the file Ghostwriter. So, but it's pretty nice. I actually like that one a lot. It's pretty well done. And uh, let's see, another one here. Nice Mannix piece. Lots of fun details in there. I don't know how Tony Stark can fit into that, but uh, but a great piece nonetheless by Mannix. And I'm not sure who the artist was on these because they're not signed, but uh, a bunch of My Hero Academia sketches. So that that is what he's shown me so far. And, you know, usually we have like 35 to 40 pieces. So there's only, what, eight or nine pieces here. So there's going to be a, a fair amount of artwork beyond what uh, he's shown me so far for those previews. So, you know, uh, the Batman was, uh, oh, gosh, why... Why am I drawing a blank on his name? Somebody's going to get it before I, I do, but I'll hop over to the website and I'll tell you because I know as soon as I see his photograph, I'll know it. Uh, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Why am I drawing? Where is that? Oh, Robbie. Robbie Amore. There we go. So, yeah, it was Robbie. Thank you, Marcus. See, I beat you to it just by a hair. All right. So, uh, no, there you go. So that was Robbie's work. And, uh, yeah, Robbie's great. I mean, he, he does some fantastic, uh, you know, illustrations like that with lots of characters. So good good piece of work there. So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the show. I haven't had Jiggy on in a long time. We, we were doing those monthly shows in the fall. 
and uh, winter and spring. And then we really didn't do a whole lot over the summer. So maybe this will be us getting back together and doing a more regular schedule with them. Although, you know, I might as well kind of show the schedule. I have been in talks more with Cadence and with uh, Jeff M. Uh, Arts, you know, the, the who uh, reps. Sorry, let me get this screen over here. Who, who uh, also reps Sean Gordon Murphy, but no Sean Gordon Murphy art. But uh, we've been talking with him about uh, some things. So schedule wise. Uh, I'll just hit the art sale stuff first. And Maureen really wants me one day to actually make it so you can see me when I'm giving these off, but uh, not tonight. So tomorrow I got Michael, of course. That's going to be a lot of fun. 2 p.m. Then next comic art on Monday at nine. Then the following Saturday, I've got my, Mike Hawthorne from Cadence will be my guest. We'll do an interview and art sale with him. I've got an amateur show with Kat and Sharon on the 26th. That's a Monday night at nine. Then and. I actually tried to change this one, but everybody wants to stick to it. I, I didn't realize uh, that October 8th, of course, is New York Comic Con weekend, everybody. And that's the weekend I've got Bart Sears on. So for those of you not going to Comic Con, you've got less competition for Bart Sears art. And for those going to Comic Con, uh, you better be carrying your phones with you at 2 p.m. Or closer probably to 3, because, you know, that's about when we'll probably get to the art. But, uh, but yeah, I brought it to their attention early this week saying that, uh, you know, we may want to switch it. And uh, Bart wanted to stick with it. So I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a whirl. Then, uh, so after that, I've got Bosberg, Mike Bosberg on Saturday the 15th. Then I'll be at uh, Baltimore uh, doing the hero auction on Friday night with them. And I will be at the show both Friday and Saturday, probably leaving early on Sunday to get back home. Then uh, in November, I've got Gerhard on the, the 5th. That's a Saturday at 2 p.m. Then uh, my first... Uh, you know, guest from Jeff M. Arts will be on November 7th, and that will be with Eric Donovan. I believe right now we'll, he's going to be, uh, you know, it'll probably be a lot like a 4C show. We're going to be doing some sketches live, and I believe he's going to be bringing some finished pieces with him as well. So it'll be a little different format than what I'm used to doing, but uh, nonetheless, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And then, of course, Comic Art Live on the 12th and 13th of November. So uh, yeah, lot, lots of uh, sales shows going on, but at the same time, I have been trying my best to get my interview schedules booked. So next Tuesday, I've got Alan Hamilton. Then the Tuesday after that, I've got Dinesh and Zatari. Uh, and I haven't got, I haven't finalized the 4th of October yet, but I'm trying. It is open at the moment. I'll have Lee Banaka on the 11th, that Tuesday. Then in November, I'll have Andy and Veronica Fish on the Tuesday before Comic Art Live. We'll, we'll, you know, we're going to be talking about not only the artwork that they've collected over the years, but uh, their careers as an artist. And I'm sure we will be previewing some of the artwork that they're bringing to Comic Art Live that very weekend. So that should be fun. Um, I should probably talk with uh, Larry and see if he might want to do another preview for Comic Art Live the day before that, too. So the 7th is definitely open right now. So I'll see if uh, maybe he might want to do that again, because that was that was pretty fun on the last show. He did a great job. Then the uh, Tuesday after that, I've got Bob McLeod on. And then the Tuesday after that will be a Heritage auction recap, because uh, the weekend after Comic Art Live is Heritage's next signature auction. So uh, so the sales and selling is uh, there's no end in sight to different auctions. Of course, we have the Comic Connect auction that's ending on Monday, at least you know the art portion of their auction. So uh, lots of stuff going on there. I think uh, Hakes ends their consignments for their next auction at the end of this month. I, I don't know when their auction starts. I believe it's probably mid October. So you figure that's probably going to end uh, in late October or early November. So. Yep, all the all the usual things that we've been used to the last six to eight months. It's just nonstop uh, buying opportunities, and I know that doesn't uh, Bashar has got his uh, his show in no, in November as well. I don't, I don't know if I've got a I've got an ad open here. When is his show? Bashar's next show is in Los Angeles, November sixth. That's a Sunday from ten to four, and I think he's got different guests. I don't think it was Mike Mignola this time. I I don't remember who his guests were this time, but. I'm trying to click on it to go over to his website to see who he's got listed there. I know it was somebody different. Oh, yeah, it was David Mack and Frank Cho. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, that'll be, uh, I, you know, I know Bashar puts on a good show, and those those shows on the West Coast are definitely well attended. And, yeah, wow wow on McLeod, Samuel. I, he's one of my favorite people. I, I, he's one of the probably one of the first three or four people that I got a convention sketch from. Still own it to this day. 
he's just such a nice guy. And I mean, clearly a guy who has worked a lot for both publishers, done a lot of, uh, he's, he's inked so many people, he's penciled so many books. So yeah, he's going to be, he's gonna be great to have on. And I'm really looking forward to talking with him. I'm glad he was able to make the time because I've been asking him for two years. He was one of the first people I asked about being a part of the first comic art live show that we did back in May 2020. And uh, he wasn't quite ready to, to do the, you know, live streaming things and whatnot. So uh, while we talked about it a bit, he ended up turning me down and then we just never, our schedules never really worked out. So just having him on to talk, it's going to be a lot of fun and just, you know, and I hope everybody brings a lot of questions because, you know, again, Bob's, Bob's been around a, a whole, a long, long time and has get, had his hands in so much that, uh, you know, it's going to be a great uh, show with lots of good stories. Uh, also this weekend, this weekend, Jeff Wedding is hosting a calf dinner meetup uh, the, on Saturday as part of the amazing Las Vegas Comic Con. That's not a sanctioned event with the con. Uh, Jeff is doing this on his own, but the Las Vegas chapter of the of comic art fans is strong and they are very welcoming. And, uh, you know, Jeff has, uh, he, he has graciously taken on the task of setting up a dinner meetup. So if you are going to that show or you're going to be in the area, really at any time, reach out to Jeff through his calf gallery. Uh, you know, the easiest way to get to his calf gallery, if you're not already following it because you're a premium member, you should, is go over to the premium member page and sort on wedding and you'll find Jeff's name right there. Email him through his calf gallery and please let him know that, uh, you know, you'd like to attend the dinner or if you're just traveling to Vegas sometime in the very near future, you know, they, uh, you know, with Matt Kennedy and Daryl uh, down there as well, they would all be happy to uh, try to get together with you if you, uh, if they were able. So it's a, uh, you know, you should plan on it. I plan. I, I'd love to get down there. I, I missed an opportunity. Unfortunately, I was planning on going to Vegas. Uh, I think it was in September and that sort of fell through on me, but I was really hoping that I was going to get to be able to hang out uh, with those guys as well. But thank you to Jeff for putting together yet another uh, awesome event there in Vegas. And uh, I look forward to photographs. So there's got to be a few. You got you to send me something after the show and we'll show them on the uh, the next calf update next Thursday. So yeah, exactly. Looking forward to seeing some people. Now I did have, where was my, I've got one uh, window here I wanted to talk about. You know, so Maureen and I are actively engaged in programming some, some things and it's a lot of work. And so there's a lot of uh, several facets to what we're working on with regards to it. And, you know, part, part of it involves kind of enhancing the security on CAF and not just, uh, not just like, you know, general security, just changing things that we've always wanted to change or add that uh, are commonplace on most sites, but haven't been commonplace on CAF. And, and one of those things has always been, you know, I, every, I'd say at least two or three times a week, I get emailed by somebody who hasn't logged into their CAF gallery in two years, and they don't have access to their Hotmail account or their Gmail account you name it. Now, you know, I have ways of figuring out who they are. Sometimes I know who they are, but in many cases, I, I'm really relying on the fact that if a guy hasn't logged into his calf gallery in two years and he wants back in because he's, he actually has art in his gallery, um, yeah, I can generally feel confident that it's not somebody trying to scam me that they want to get into this guy's calf gallery because, you know, it, it's clear that uh, that's who they are. But a lot of times I have to ask them for, you know, profile information and things like that. So what, what are we doing? We're actually going to uh, integrate uh, a pair of security questions with your account. It will make my life so much easier that, uh, you know, we force everybody to answer a couple security questions when somebody loses access to their site or for whatever reason I have to verify your identity for God knows why. I will be able to ask these security questions of you and you'll be able to answer them. And, and, and it, again, it'll make my, uh, my life so much easier because on the clerical side of things, it can sometimes be a bit maddening to look those things up. So um, I can show you how, you know, there's two ways that you'll be able to get to answer the security questions. The pages aren't pretty yet. I have not really gone in and formatted them hardly at all. But if you were to go into your, uh, uh, like to edit your profile right up at the top. It'll tell you if you've uh, answered your security questions yet or you haven't right now I have uh, at least as this looks so when I click on there I can easily go in and update those when uh, the other way you end up getting to them is when you log in to comic art fans We always have this interstitial page that we show that you've logged in and and whatnot Well, there's a, there'll be an extra message here stating that you haven't set up your security questions yet and we don't force you to do it 
but we're trying our best to ask you to do it because it will make life easier in case you know there's ever an issue with your account somewhere down the road you, you know we're, we need to have uh those things filled out and we've made the questions more, you know rather you know a little more comic centric i know my screen's pretty small here so you can't see it but you know as far as security questions go i've got your standard ones name of elementary school blah you know name of your first pet uh, but then I had, I've, I've just put in some ones that are just more generic. What is your superpower? What year did you buy your first comic artwork? Who was your favorite comic artist? Who was your favorite comic book stripper character? So, uh, so, you know, you can answer the fun ones or you can go and answer this, you know, your mother's maiden name questions. I don't care, but, uh, but I would encourage everybody to go ahead and get in there and update those because you just never know when I'm going to need, <laughs> when I'm going to need uh access the you know to your account to ask you the questions all that kind of stuff so yeah long overdue but um but i'm happy to finally be tackling that and um so outside of that uh, you know but it's leading into a lot of other things that maureen and i are working on that we hope to have ready for the next comic art live i mean can't really talk about all of it yet but there's just a lot of a lot of things that we're trying to get integrated to uh, to CAF uh, real soon and some great ideas have come up. I mean, I've had kind of I've, I've kind of assembled a small focus group to ask questions of uh, certain things, trying to resolve different issues with CAF and uh, you know the community at large. I think we've come up with some really great ideas, and you know getting them all implemented will be uh, interesting. But at this, but I know that the work that we're doing right now is going to make the the hobby a safer place, a more a more trustworthy and trusted place, and and CAF being the center of that is really you know what uh is, is how it should be so just trying to resolve those problems and what I, I really just sat down with some people and i just pitched them on these are things we're thinking about what are your your thoughts and uh you know the person i, I spoke to yesterday just threw back one of the best ideas i had ever heard and uh, i'm really excited to implement it because it's uh, it was really really well thought out and uh but again we're we're our goal is to you know, try to fix those issues that many uh, sellers have today. You know, when you get a, a person who wants to buy something from you through CAF and they have nothing in their gallery, you don't, you know, you know when they registered, but you don't know anything about them beyond that. So uh, we're, those are the, those, that's like one of the number one things that we're trying to resolve is, is helping you establish trust with, with potentially those people who don't have CAF galleries, but even those who do. So, uh, you know, and I think that works both ways. If we can establish trust on the, as a buyer, I think we can hopefully then uh, establish trust as sellers as well. So yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting at the end of the day, if we can get it all done, but a lot, I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably have the majority of those types of things wrapped up before the end of the year. So I'll keep everybody up, uh, updated on that. So yes, uh, okay. Any hobby has some healthy suspicion and paranoia. That's what Samuel says. So I agree, Samuel, absolutely. And that is why, and, and you have to, I mean, we've seen too many, uh, too many cases of uh, fraud being committed in many different ways from sellers and buyers that uh, aren't on the up and up, you know, and it's not, and so establishing that, that uh, trust factor, the, the, uh, and, and setting calf up to have, uh, uh, to give everyone confidence in whom they're dealing with, I think is is really what we're aiming for here. And uh, I think we have a really good plan to address that. And, uh, you know, I look forward to talking more about that. Uh, you know, probably, it's probably gonna be October when I can talk a bit about uh, those things more, but uh, it's it's gonna be coming. And I, I couldn't be happier to, to be a part of it. <laughs> flat, oh boy, you guys, flat or round earth in a tube. Okay. Um, Outside of the security questions, yeah, I can't really talk about the other stuff yet, but um, why don't we go ahead and see, I'm, I, I really did want to run through this so we don't keep everybody too long tonight. So I, I'm going to just uh, I'm gonna dance over to my heritage picks. How's that? And uh, go through those in a hurry. I, you know, I, I kind of went through what I did with the heritage picks this time. I don't always try to have a theme. I'm not good like Anthony when he, you know, he does his round by round. Um you know, pairings of artwork during dueling dealers. But when I was looking at the artwork in this week's heritage auction, I, you know, I, I saw that I owned a lot of artwork by artists who were represented there. And there were several artists who, uh, who were in that, uh, you know, the auction that I really want to get pieces from that I don't have represented in my calf gallery or collection today. So when I was thinking about that, I just decided I was going to pick five pieces of art from uh, from people who I already have artwork from, and then five pieces from 
artists whose work I'd love to have in my calf gallery and don't as of yet. But, uh, and, and I can tell you, I don't think I placed any bids yet this week either. So, you know, there were a few pieces that I'd like to bid on. But so here are the 10 picks for the week. I mean, this one was kind of a no-brainer. Uh, Chuck Arnold would have to agree, you know, getting an early Frank Quitely X-Men piece would be nice. I've got, I have one from uh, the issue before this, the end page, but you know, this is a, this is a really nice one from new X-Men 116. Uh, you got Gene and Emma in it and, uh, you know, and early in the run, I just love these, these pages. I mean, her legs look a little bit long. That's okay. That's, that's Quitely style. I adore this page. And, uh, at least at the time it was at 1750. So I think it was probably, it's probably one of the higher priced items in there right now. So $2,000 for it. But, uh, so I have one. So that, that was, this is the first five are from artists whose work I actually already have. And, uh, here we go with the Brian Lee O'Malley, Scott Pilgrim page. I was, uh, gifted a page by comic art boston a few months back and actually where's that oh I, I i actually have a brian lee piece in this uh package that i have to open today too i didn't write that down i got to do that before the end of the show but uh but you know i mean obviously felix reps him for his sales and they, they pretty much sell out right away so i just really really like his work a lot my daughters love his work a lot and uh which is why I got a second page from uh, from Anthony. But uh, so this is a nice one. And here we go. We got some Mike Allred. I have uh, got an Ecstatics page from Allred, but uh, this is a like an eye zombie piece, <laughs> very uh, very cheeky piece there, as I think I wrote in my outline on uh, for the show today. But uh, I love Allred's work. He can he can definitely do no wrong. I mean he's he's just he's just awesome. And I and I love the you know, the kind of uh, turn of the century feel to uh, to this. It's like, uh, yeah, it's it's gruesome and lovely all at the same time. And then uh, Phil Noto, I mean, we don't really hear much from Phil anymore. I don't know uh, what he, he's doing professionally and maybe he's still doing some stuff in comics. I just haven't, haven't seen him in the news too often, but uh, I have a Phil Noto Phoenix piece from him that's kind of on the same uh, Canson paper. And that's probably not Canson because it's really, it's really smooth, slick uh, and light paper. But uh, same kind of style as far as uh, Copics and whatnot on it, but without any color. This one's kind of nice where he's kind of added the reds and uh, some of the other tones in there to kind of give her a more fleshy feel. Uh, my, my Phoenix done on this, while nice, is kind of more flat. But it'd be cool if I should. I should have pulled it out so everybody could see it. But, uh, but it is. It's not as, it doesn't have the same depth that this, this uh, illustration has. So very nice fill note of right there. Now, actually, I, okay, I don't have a Terry Moore, so I guess I, I, I jumped into the, the pieces I want to own by somebody, and I've always wanted to get uh, a Strangers in Paradise page, so, and I know, you know, they're, they're around, I should just add one to my collection, I don't know why I haven't, but uh, there is this very nice page in Heritage Weekly Auction that uh, if you're looking for a piece by, uh, by him, you can uh, pick one up. And now here, you know, this this was a nice one, and I'll probably end up bidding on this one. Although who knows where it's at right now? It was at twenty five dollars when I opened this earlier. That's only three forty. So, um, you know, this is a Walt Simonson and uh, Tony DeZuniga piece uh, from Thor issue two seventy one. So, Thor, so Walt's first run on it, and you get Iron Man and Thor, you know, doing some battling here. So, really, really nice stuff. I mean, I know it's uh, you know it's pre. Simonson, uh, really not quite in that in the feel for what we like and uh, out of Simonson from his uh, Thor run, but you can still see it like here in these little energy fields and whatnot. Uh, you know that's definitely Simonson, you know, Walt's Walt's lines to a T, and and I, you know these pages come up fairly regularly, and uh, but this is a nice one because you get Iron Man with it as well. Uh, yeah, I say the yay. <laughs> yes, Nick, Nick, and Nick and I. Uh, I don't know how we we manage to keep the pace that we do with live streams and and business in general. But uh, yeah, Nick, Nick is Nick's amazing. He he is uh, working harder at this than I am. So uh, I applaud all the effort. Nick did a great job last night on the show. If, you, if, if for those of you who didn't get to watch last night's uh, uh, attempt at a calf update, which just became the. Uh, the heritage recap and the comic connect preview you got to watch the last couple hours with nick and dino that was it's a lot of fun definitely a nice perspective on uh their approach to the heritage signature auction from last week 
but yeah, I really like this page a lot. So yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to put some a bid on that one before things uh, get out of hand there. Now, uh, here is a Carmen Infantino Supergirl page, and uh, let's see, that was from issue 12. Now, I have set aside a page with Mike. It's actually a Carmen Infantino Iron Man page, so of course more up my alley being Marvel. But uh, you know, I Infantino is kind of like. Uh, yeah, you know, certain artists where I didn't really appreciate them very much when I was younger, and I really like their work today. So uh, I, I know most DC fans probably, uh, you know, would scoff at me for not appreciating Carmen's work early, but um, but I really like his work now, and uh, and this is definitely a a good page if you're looking for something from Carmen. Then uh, a Tusca. I mean, I, I've talked about Tusca before, and I, I've even you know I've talked to several people about Tusca. Tusca is a hard guy for me to find a page that I like. And uh, this one is actually from Hero for Hire 5. So uh, it's uh, Billy Graham inks on this one. But this is just a fantastic page. I, I, I love everything about this one. And I definitely should put a bid on this one. Because with Tusca, you know, like we had that piece, uh, the Cap and Bucky piece in the uh, Dueling Dealers episode on Wednesday. And there's a lot of George's convention sketches out there. But you know, try as I might, I've not quite really seen a piece of his that uh, that I really want, published or unpublished. So, but this page, this this thing is gorgeous. And from early in the uh, Hero for Hire run, you know, issue five, 1973. So uh, you know, this page is 49 years old, man. But uh, but if I want to want to get something from Tusca, and I have, I just haven't seen anything. You know, this would be a good page for me to pick up. So yeah, Mr. Easy Go Lucky loves. Tusca and uh, CJ says, "What a career!" Absolutely, I know. And Tusca is underappreciated, and I don't know why. It's just, you know, because he doesn't have. It's it's just not like, I don't know. It's it's just not home runs every time. I don't know why. It's something about uh, his figure work. I don't know. I mean, I I, I can't put my finger on it. But uh, but this page. I, I love everything about it. And uh, again, being a Marvel page makes it all the better. I don't know what kind of gun that is. That looks like something a Joker would be using. It's, uh, But still very, very cool. Uh, it must be some kind of smoke gun. There's a lot of smoke going on around it. So anyway, but uh, yes, I'm going to be bidding on that one. Uh, next up, you know, this was like, you know, here's an early Captain Marvel page by Don Heck, somebody I don't own anything by. And uh, so it's from Captain Marvel 8. You know, nothing spectacular about it, but, you know, if you want to get an early Captain Marvel page with that costume, you know, because there's not not many of them out there, this is, uh, you know, it's actually not a bad page. So it's Vince Scaletta inks, got some Zipatone on it, but, uh, but yeah, I like this one. I mean, I don't know where it's, it's probably, I bet you it's probably not too, uh, too high right now. What is it? 102. It's going it, to, it should go for a, uh, uh, an easy to afford amount, I would have to think. I mean, you know, Easy to afford being, I don't know what, 1600 I, I have no idea what these pieces go for. But I'll still put a few bids on it. We'll see how it goes. But uh, Don Heck is somebody who I've never owned anything by and would love to get something from them. And uh, I hate when, when Heritage does that. That whole, They log you out after some certain times, and I've never understood it. And then they do that. Then they remember what page you were on prior, and so they just stick you in there willy-nilly. But uh, so this is a Frank King gasoline alley. I mean, I've tried to, I've only got like three or four strips uh, in my collection, but uh, a gasoline alley strip has been one that I'd love to get. Frank King, just a phenomenal artist. And th this piece here is actually kind of nice. It's kind of a, I think this was two weeks, two weeks before Christmas. Yeah, it's December 12th, 1945. So they're talking about the Christmas tree and everybody's carrying presents here. So really nice page uh, strip here. And you know, Frank King has just a really awesome style. So, um, you know, I think that these are always pretty affordable. The Sundays go for a, a pretty high amount, but I think the dailies are, uh, you know, around a, a grand or two, maybe. I could be wrong, but because uh, it's not a market I look at too much. But, but again, I want to at least get one strip art into the set from Heritage. So, so there you go. Those are my 10 picks. <laughs> Password, I love grilled cheese from Samuel Ross. <laughs> All right. Oh, Baller says Chris Nork. Thank you, Chris. Hey, Chris, I would have invited you on tonight, but I really want to power through things tonight. So I hope uh, hope you're having a good time tonight. And I'm sorry you had to take the night off last, uh, last night, but uh, we'll be back at it again next week. So 
1945 is a tad before many of our times, unfortunately. But uh, but I've always wanted one. I I don't know why. Frank King, his, his style is just so is really cool, unique for the time, the you know that era. And uh, you know, one of these days, I will add a piece to my uh, calf gallery, without question. So let me go ahead and close that, strike that from my list, and um, I think that might actually cover the majority of the the things I wanted to talk about before. <laughs> we get to uh get to the calf update i'm just trying to look at all my screens here that i've opened i'm pretty sure that that covered every single thing i wanted to talk about um but uh but yeah so you know the thing is i said i want to talk about what we've been working on i just can't really do it yet but um but i will uh hopefully in the next couple of weeks just some fun stuff going on that uh maureen is she's racking her brain on it right now in the other room trying to uh um to really kind of figure out a few of the uh, the challenges that I've put in front of her, but she's uh, she's working her way through it. I know that in, at the end of the day, it's going to work out really well for us and for everybody else. So, yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and do the calf update. We might, I don't think we're going to get it done in an hour, but we're going to we're going to try. So uh, last week's sales were uh, about average, I'd say. This is uh, from the from the period of the fifth through the eleventh of September, of course, and uh, we start off with the dealers. 235,000 in sales this past week, and the week prior to that was 208. So a bit of an uptick there. The uh, top sellers of the week uh, was Felix was number one. He had 52 sales, but he did sell a complete issue for uh, 36,000. We're going to see that in a minute. Uh, he had uh, he had just over 65,000 dollars in sales. Ramita Man was second. He had 21 sales, just under 60,000. Anthony 63 sales, uh, winning in the volume list as always with uh, 37 in sales. Uh, Albert had 12 sales, 24,000. Uh, Ruben, Ruben is in here. We never talk about Ruben, do we? I don't, I don't know why that is, but uh, there you go. Comic book art gallery, 23 sales recorded, 12,000 in sales. And then panel page had five sales at $10,000. So those are your dealers whom we have been uh, able to track thanks to me hosting them and uh, their recorded sales. I'm sure there are lots of other sales going on that we don't track as we all know. I only host probably 10% of the dealer websites out there. So uh, so if that's uh, any indication of extrapolating what the uh, dealer sales markets across the globe looks like, I mean, it's still a very healthy market. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the top six sales from original art dealers last week. So here is uh, that list. So like I said, $235,000 in sales overall from the 25 or so dealers we track. First up was the uh, Step by Bloody Step issue four, complete issue that uh, was sold for $36,000 by Felix. Vergara art on that one, of course. And next up, we've got this Dark Forces cover, a very large painting, and uh, was seen in a Stephen King movie, was the note on it from Mike, and uh, Bernie Wrights in art. This one sold for $25,000. Then a uh, dueling dealer sale, as we, as many of you probably know, from Superman 247, the title page, by Swan and Anderson. And this one sold for $7,500 on the show. Then we've got this awesome Punisher portfolio painting by Mike Zeck. And uh, this one went for $7,500, sold by Glenn from Panel Page Art. Zeck knows how to draw firearms, doesn't he? And okay, then this is a what if very good one. This was uh, art by Jim Craig and Sam Granger. This is from what if number six sold by Berkey asking price $7,500. And then finally, this one was sold by Albert. This is a, a toy biz artwork Avengers versus a big monster. The big monster apparently has no name, but the price on this one was $6,500. So uh, that was your top six sales. Justin Porter, that is your Punisher. Yeah, that was an awesome piece, man. Really, really nice. I mean, I, you know, like I said, Zach, nobody draws guns quite like Mr. Zach. He is uh, amazing when it comes to that. And uh, yeah, really, really good stuff. So uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, and let's see, we're getting an update. Chris says that the last issue of Swamp Thing dropped and Perkins is killing it. I, we all know that. We feature we featured several people uh, pieces from the Swamp Thing by Perkins over the, uh, heck, over the last year, right? So uh, Chris and I are big fans of what Perkins is doing. And I even mentioned him earlier on that cap cover in Lee's Flip. So, uh, no, I love love it. So uh, let's go take a look at uh, the auction results. Auction results totally skewed because of the Heritage Signature Auction. 
10.1 million dollars in sales last week so you know but how much was that of, of the 10.1 million the uh, 9.77 of that came from the heritage signature auction and then we had 255,000 in the heritage weekly and then 145,000 in the ebay auctions now you know we're going to look at these and remember i i commented when we were looking at the items in that heritage uh, preview that i did uh, you know, where they had like the Garcia Lopez detective comics cover in there, you know, that went for $43,000 in the weekly auction the day before the signature auction went off. So that, that plus, uh, that Luke McDonald Iron Man cover that, you know, I also featured that one went for $40,800. We're, I mean, we're going to see it in a minute too, but it's just amazing that they put those two pieces in there that, uh, accounted for 84, yeah, $84,000 of the $255,000 total. I mean, those, those two pieces could have easily been in the signature auction. And I mean, I don't know if they would have done any better, but, uh, but it was odd to see those two pieces in their weekly auction because that just doesn't, uh, that's just not normal for them to do something like that. Uh, but anyways, let's take a look at it. So 10.1 million from that week, the week before was a $327,000 week. Now also from this week and not recorded in here, the comic link featured auction did end, you know, I should have asked Josh what the total was from it. I was doing that for a while. And I've kind of got off the rails a bit with with following up with him after his featured auction. So I'll try to get that information from him. But but Josh, you know, they had they had a couple of really nice sales during the featured auction as well. He had the that Doctor Strange cover by Gene Colon went for eighty six thousand uh, dollars. There was the Ditko Strange Tales page that they used in a lot of their uh, advertising that went for sixty six thousand dollars, and then that Frank Bruner uh, Marvel Premier cover went for sixty five as well. So. Comic Link had a really solid week there as well that we aren't and can't track because they don't share their market data with us. But I should have gotten the total sales from him. I will, uh, I'll definitely follow up with him on that. Uh, so let me go ahead and highlight the top three sales from eBay and the top three sales from Heritage last week, Heritage Weekly last week. So again, total sales overall, 10.1 million. And, uh, you know, here are the top three eBay sales. First up was this Todd McFarlane Infinity Inc. page from issue 16, sold for $4,050. You know, classic layout by Todd there for sure uh, during that period. And then we've got a Gabrielle Delato Joker painting. This one was framed, so it was a little hard to kind of finesse this scan to make it look good, but the price on this one was uh, $4,000, a penny under that actually. Then uh, a Tusker, George Tusker, Dan Adkins, Strange Tales page. This one went for $3,500 on eBay, which seems, you know, it seems a little low to me for a Strange Tales page, but maybe it's because it was on eBay. So here are the top three from Heritage. This was that Garcia Lopez Detective Comics cover that sold for $43,200. Unbelievable. It's awesome. And I don't know why it wasn't in the signature auction. Then here is that Luke McDonald piece that we also featured from Iron Man 191. Lots of Zipatone on this one, went for $40,800. And then finally, uh, another one of those Milton Kniff, Terry and the Pirates dailies. This one was from 1935, sold for $20,400. So uh, those Kniffs continue to do incredibly well during those during the weekly auctions. And you know, as we know, we had uh, someone passed away, donated or put a lot of uh, consignment of uh, those Kniffs into Heritage, and uh, you know we'll probably be seeing those for the next several years. I think there were over 500 pieces that were uh, part of that gentleman's collection when when they passed. So, yeah, it's probably going to be three or four years, you know, where we're going to continue to see the really nice Kniffs come out of that uh, that one person's collection. So, yeah, very very solid. I can't sniff a Kniff. <laughs> All right, Marcus, you probably could if you tried. Um, so yeah, very, uh, but overall very good week, but I'm going to have to talk with Josh. I have got to make a note of that. He and I used to be simpatico on reminding each other to uh, get me his sales data and, uh, you know, at least summary sales data after his auctions. And we kind of fell off the boat there. So I'll get, I'll get back to him with that and we'll try to do uh, a better job going forward over there. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at the popular artworks. Now I know Chris isn't here. I'm going to show Chris's picks and I'm going to show my picks as well. And I'll do my best to, uh, to talk well, but Chris, if, if I miss any important aspects of these artworks, feel free to, to say something in the chat to, to let everybody know, uh, that I, that, you know, why you picked it, but, uh, it should be, it should be pretty obvious. I think on most of these pieces, I, I've looked at these a couple times now since I had the extra day to go through these. 
Uh, let's see here. Let me get this highlighted. So uh, first up, Alberto. Alberto, who is who has said he is tapped out. He is he is he's taken the weekend off from from uh, art sales altogether because he's been buying a lot of art lady, lately. And uh, you know who, who could blame him? I, I bet you many people are taking some time off from uh, from buying artwork just for that very same reason. But uh, this is a Lionel U variant cover to Cap One. This is from 2018. Just uh, you know, as far well here, let me just go ahead and click on so we can look at the details a little bit better. I mean, I've always loved Lionel's work, and I think that this one's really nice because you know you've got uh, you know his his atypical awesome line work, and then you've got the the painted stuff going on here as well. And he, he really makes the uh, Cap's costume, you know, his uh, all you know his armor really look like armor, you know, which uh, usually you know, you know it's like you're not going to get that kind of lighting effect done on. Uh, you know, inside of a comic, but here you've got a really well done painted piece. I mean, everything about this thing is very, very nice. I, I'm a huge fan of Lanel. I've I don't own anything by him now, but I definitely uh, I think I've probably owned about four or five pages in the past when he was working on different X books. I used to have a Century cover with Spider Man on it that I sold because of the mini golf that was terribly awesome. But uh, but yeah, I'm a huge fan. And I, I like the fact that the line work is heavier around the face. Everything just kind of draws you into cap. And then it kind of fades out as far as, uh, you know, the, the, the detail and uh, the darkness in the in the in the in the paint there just makes for a really solid piece. And uh, and Alberto's a big cap fan. And that, so it's it's no wonder to me at all that uh, this wound up in his in his collection. And yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a powerful image, definitely. So congrats. Very, very, very nice, and I and I do I really like you know on this I'll just say it again the the, the tight line work with the uh, with the watercolor is just a really nice touch and kind of really it brings out um, his his lines just you know accentuates them even more. So Lionel is uh, it's always going to be one of my my favorite artists. I love it, and I got my like on that one. Nice pick there for us, Chris, to get us started. So uh, Eduardo Pen Pensic. Pensica. Uh, this is uh, from Suicide Squad number eight. It's a DPS. This is in Robert Moore's calf gallery. Not familiar with Robert's calf gallery, but uh, really nice pencil work here. Just great, great uh, detail. You know, again, you know, I talk about this a lot. I, I love it when artists don't use a traditional panel layout to, uh, to, to, to set the stage for a page. You know, and this is a DPS, which kind of really helps, uh, you know, kind of Kind of force that here uh you, you know it looks like he's using some kind of line uh you know some vine work here to kind of separate some of the sections i don't believe a color image was in it or was there oh there was so we can even look at that oh so yeah you can tell it's nice to nice there but uh yeah i don't know if i like the, the way that's colored but definitely like the way uh uh swamp things colored there so just a nice solid piece and i, I like to say i'm not familiar with the artist but uh i like the detail in the in the uh, characters the rendering i mean I wish i know that the uh gallery owner is not premium so we don't have a bigger image but it looks like some really tight pencil work throughout the figure here in peacemaker uh in the shading so the lighting on this thing is really really great but i'd love to be able to see the detail in that a little bit more but uh but yeah very very nicely done and again just breaking from the traditional panel layout is something that i always appreciate and i know chris does as well so yeah, this is a very very nice DPS, and uh, thank you to uh, to uh, Robert Robert for adding this one to calf. <laughs> Peacemaker, bottom right strength of face. You actually, you know, you're uh, sorry for CJ for not paying attention to the chat, but you you are absolutely right. That that is a strength of expression, one hundred percent. So uh, yes. And uh, Alberto said it was one of the tightest pencils I've seen in a while. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's why I wish we could see this thing in detail. Who, who do, does anybody know who reps Eduardo? Um, if anybody knows, I'd be curious. Or do they sell their own stuff? I'm not familiar with the artist at all. So I'll I'll look in the chat when when somebody mentions it. So uh, next up, collection of Dennis Hoffman, Aquaman. Now I think Chris knew that he wasn't going to be on the show, so he had to give me a tough one. Uh, and, and Aquaman, no less, right? One of the one of the characters that we can't sell on Dueling Dealers to save our lives. But uh, you know, I, I can I can speak to this one a little bit. I actually like the lighting on this piece. Uh, you know, clearly he's underwater, but uh, you know the way the way the piece is lit, it's it's almost like the you know it's 
it's interesting the way he's done it. Uh, I like the heavy shading on the, the on the one side of the the figure. Uh, you can see the shadow of the the staff across his chest, his uh, stomach. So uh, just a nicely lit piece, interesting. Um, and we what we got we got Ron Salas and again somebody who I'm not super familiar with either. So smooth scales. <laughs> I know, I know it is smooth scales. But uh, a nice piece there. I kind of like, you know, this is, you can look at this and kind of compare it to the cat piece, right? Where Lionel pretty much drew every single scale on the uh, costume. Here, Ron has chosen not to. He's actually, you know, leaving it to our imagination and only where there's shadow do we see any of the, the scales on the, uh, on the costume there. I mean, it's a, it's a nice touch. At the end of the day, uh, it makes, makes it feel for a very, very strong uh, light source on, on the character. So, you know, I can't uh, can't deny that it is a nice piece. I wonder what the scale is on this. It's probably a smaller piece. Uh, there's no description on it, unfortunately. All right. Well, uh, so Robert Penn says uh, that they've got a uh, the rip by Kiroshiro. Okay. Huh. I'll have to uh, I'll have to check them out. You know, I haven't been on. I almost I don't know. I don't shop too much on the rep sites. I probably should, but I haven't been to Kiroshiro's in a long time. Um, so let me, uh, I'll have to go take a look at their site. They, they were actually going to start advertising on CAF again because it's like a year and a half ago, they were supposed to relaunch their website, but I don't think they have. And that's probably why they haven't started advertising on CAF again. Um, so uh, Chris, Chris Lutz has mentioned that uh, Ron Salas has dropped a, a lot of uh, rather in, uh, affordable, I won't say cheap, affordable sketches on his site. So I'm not sure, uh, I'm sure you can Google Ron Salas to uh, find their website, but um, you can, uh, you should do that. Maybe there's, for me, maybe there's some Marvel pieces out there. All right, so this is next piece is in uh, Tim D's collection. And uh, yeah, this this was one that I would have actually picked. I'm not, I, I, yeah, I've seen James Stokoe's work a lot. It's really awesome. This is uh, in the collection, uh, again, Tim Dury, but uh, we can click on this one and get some hyper detail on it. Just look at that. <laughs> yeah, he is, the line work on this one is so crisp. I mean, you know, whereas, uh, you know, the, the Swamp Thing piece was really nice. You know, things were more, uh, I think, while the penciling was tight, you know, it was, it was still really uh, kind of finessed and feathered together. Here you've got a piece that's more like a, you know, woodcut. You know, like each one of these marks is just like, you almost feel like they're the artist is being, you know, super aggressive with with each mark that they're putting into this piece. And the detail in, uh, in both these characters here in this first panel is just crazy. Uh, Really, really, and you know the musculature on that uh, big guy is interesting. Definitely not uh, uh, not somebody you'd want to mess around with. I mean, that's uh, wow. But uh, yeah, but you know the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Clearly, this guy is he's not uh, he's not surviving this this battle with the other character. But love the action lines on this. Uh, just trying to see because you know, this was something that I mentioned to um, uh, to Sean the other day too. You know, you see, you, you know except here, you know, a lot of this stuff, he's got all these action lines on here, but, he, you know, they're not drawing the traditional, you know, dash, 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 showing the movement, but he does do it here with uh, these bouncing motions of the character. But I like the fact that uh, he's got this, again, that's a very similar Sean Gordon Murphy thing where you, you've just got a lot of action lines in the background to convey that there's a lot of action ha happening on the page, but without having to necessarily draw the fact that you know the staff is is uh, slicing this way. I mean, you get the the slice here because of the blood trail, but uh, you know you don't you don't need it uh, for any other reason. So really nice stuff here, and I and uh, I do like the the uh, the pencil work on here a, a great deal. Really really solid. I mean, look at the you know the back of this guy's uh, uh, cape or whatever that is. You know, just fun funky. I like it. So uh, thigh gap shots, says Marcus. There's always thigh gap shots everywhere. I mean, what do you, you can't, they're unavoidable. Absolutely. Yeah, that first one too, right? Krang. That, yeah, that looks like it hurt. So uh, speed line around us, says CJ. Yes, and as Nick just said, please, uh, it's a Friday night. Give me as many likes as you can. That'll help people uh, know that we switched our nights this week. So uh, let's see, Calf Gallery of Ed M. I don't, I'm not familiar with Ed M, I don't think, but this is from uh, Gerald Perel, rep by Kirby's Comic Art, if I'm not mistaken. This is uh, the Excess of Wolverine number one variant cover. Uh, this was a piece I would have picked as well. Um, yeah, I think it's cool with the, uh, the 
you know, cyber graphic -y stuff going on top of here. And I don't, I'm not familiar with the story, so I don't know why that's on there, but I really love the tonal piece on here. And what I loved even more was the fact that it was these white lines that really kind of ties the character together. He's not, he's not using any uh, outline uh, on Wolverine to really define him from the space. And it's just neat that he's using this, uh, you know, cybertronic kind of stuff going on within the costume and his claws to kind of define the uh, character more. And I, to zoom out i think it's better to look at it like this so just a really nice piece and you know i always love painted artworks uh, you know we've got several fans uh, people who are focused on collected collecting painted artworks in uh, uh on calf and around so uh oh lyle it's 3 a.m where you're at man i'm sorry uh you must be in uh, the uk so uh, have a good night thanks for tuning in we appreciate it but uh, yeah, just like Justin says, very cool, Wolvie. And uh, you know, without those uh, white lines in here, it might have you know because of the way the the color uh, is not you know, you know really very. I don't know, it's not it's not, uh, it's not defining things enough, but the white lines do it all. So again, really really well thought out piece here, and uh, congratulations. Hey, let me see what the published one. Do they stick to it? Oh yeah, very very much so. Uh, Ed M's calf gallery. Uh, very nice piece. Congratulations to uh, to um, Ad Adamantium is conductive. It must be Marcus. It must be Warlock Wolverine. Yeah, it is kind of like that. I didn't even think of it like that. But you're right, uh, AFG Media. Thank you for that. All right. So here we have a piece from our very own Marcus Y. Uh, this is from Harley Quinn: The Animated Series, The Real Sidekicks of New Gotham Special, Number One, covered by Dan Hip. Dan Hip is, is somebody we, we I don't gosh, we ever talk about Dan Hip, but uh, I've always loved Dan's work. And uh, this one is, thank you for the giant scan as well, uh, Marcus. This one is just so cool. I love, you know, it takes a lot of work to kind of put these heavy pencil lines in here like this. And he makes it look so effortlessly, you know, I mean, as far as these outlines go, I mean, that, again, he, you, there's a lot of, lot of work going into this, even though it's just a straight pencil piece. Uh, you know, the nice, nice cross hatching, you know, thinner lines here to kind of give the car some shape, but, uh, then, then these heavy lines on the characters, I mean, it's, it's fun and, uh, you know, sure it's, it's kind of a cartoony style, but that's, uh, that's kind of what you, uh, what you want out of a hip piece. And, uh, I love it busting through a, through a billboard. You get some, get some of the, what I assume, I, I, I don't, I know a little bit about DC. I'm assuming that's Clayface down there and there's that shark guy. Uh, at any rate, uh, DC is not always my thing, but I love this piece and I love the fact that it's all pencil. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't, if this piece were inked, I don't, I don't think I'd, uh, I'd have the same uh, you know opinion of it, but I, I like this one. It's just absolutely uh, fun and really well done. It's kind of got a, you know, it, hip's kind of got this vintage penciling style, I think about his work. I mean, uh, I don't want to like correlate it to, uh, like that gasoline alley strip, but there's something about it that uh, is, uh, you know, has a very older feel to the way he approaches his pencil style. So, uh, so very, very nice pickup, uh, Marcus, and congratulations on that one. It, it is, it is gorgeous. And yep, I got my like on it. But you know what? I haven't, I haven't left a calf, uh, a calf comment in a long time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave something for uh, Marcus. And that, in fact, everybody, uh, you know, anybody who's uh, gets on the calf tonight and gets into Marcus's calf gallery. You should definitely leave him a comment. And if you can write a song for uh, Marcus, you might want to give it a try. I mean, I know I couldn't do it, but maybe there's some of you out there who uh, who could do a, a riff on a popular song. There's There's got to be something here. I Can't Drive uh, 65, something like that. I think, I think there's something there. I, I'm planting the seed. You guys figure it out. Um, I think we can work something out here. All right, next up, uh, this is in Ryan CCC's calf gallery from the uh, Collector's Choice Comics. Do I know that website? Why does that sound familiar? I'm just kind of curious. Nope, I don't think I've ever been on their website. So I don't know much about Collector's Choice Comics, but I'll, uh, I'll take that tab off and learn more about Ryan. So uh, this is a Bruce Tim piece. A uh, little bit of under, under, uh, under cleavage there, uh, but, you know, you can't go wrong with the Bruce Tim. I think Albert would tell you that. I think many collectors would tell you that. Uh, you know, he draws he draws his uh, his female figures. You know, wonderfully. I mean, whether you know, maybe they have similar poses, all that kind of stuff. But Tim's work is just so great. Uh, you know, so many people want to own a Tim. Some you know, many people want to own multiple Tims. But uh, you know, for me, it, 
hey, Savage Land Rogue would probably be very high on my list. Yes, under boob. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, I'm not good at the uh, at the the lingo, but uh, but yeah, we don't need to click on this one to see how awesome it is because it, I would probably be focused in the wrong part of her anatomy if I did that. But uh, I'm glad that her her gloves you know stayed uh, intact because nothing else on her did uh, in her trip to the Savage Land. But uh, really, really, I mean, again, it's it's awesome. If you want to want to Bruce Tim, uh, you know, this is a good one. I've always, as much as I've always liked his color work, I still always I think I would. And I do have a storm uh, piece. I like I like his ink work, you know, alone better than uh, the color pieces. So this one's really uh, pretty well done. Um, I'd, I'm still, as far as a preference for me, I, I like uh, his his ink alone pieces. So uh, <laughs> Rick Rick wins. What did Rick say? <laughs> Temptation. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, the things from the chat. Things heard in the chat. Well, I, you know, we got to be writing all these things down and hashtag these because uh, we've we've got so much material to use for years and years and years and years. Um, yes. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, Rich. Uh, Rich Danny says uh, Salas has a calf gallery joined in July two thousand seven. I'm gonna have to check that out, Rich. Thanks for pointing that out for me. Her earrings are intact too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mister Redjack. Uh, Let's see. Tim says he's got, got a splash from his Avengers comic, but uh, uh, he'd love to have a color pinup as well. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I do like his color work, but there, there's something about it that uh, takes me too close to like that animate, you know, the animated feel. That's why I still like when it's the pen and ink, it, it just feels different to me. I, I like his pen and ink work more, but to, that's what we is great about this hobby. We all have different preferences on what we want to collect overdressed i uh, know she's not overdressed but a uh, very nice addition to ryan hicks calf gallery and another good pick from mr chris snorick so uh boy this is a name i'm going to mess up michael molinario well, i'm not going to mess that one up so uh let's see and that's somebody i'm familiar with they're a member for 11 years i mean i've had to have been in their calf gallery before but uh let's see this one is uh an artist named louis rose la rosa and uh, it's from Black Science 40 from 2019. Uh, not familiar with the, the, the book, unfortunately, Black Science 40. I mean, the, uh, you know, by Rick Remeter, uh, so popular author, of course. But uh, so it's a, nice, it's a nice piece. It looks like it's all, uh, let's see, what does he write down for medium in here? Pencils, inks, and Copics. Yeah, it look like Copics to me. Um, that's right. Well, okay. Uh, you know, nicely done in, in Copics. I mean, I, I like the uh, composition on this. Now, is this a, so this is a variant cover. Okay. That makes sense. I was trying to figure out why there was, uh, you know, the open space top left on there, but uh, so a nice composition for a cover, you know, clearly you got, you got all the things you need in it to kind of bring your eye around. Uh, and I assume uh, whoever's uh, doing the battle in there, he's, he doesn't know that he's got uh, trouble coming from the backside there, but uh no, I, I like it. You know, what I really like about it is the depth of it. It's back to, you know, we see this a lot um, and, and it's probably more achievable and things like Copic or when you're doing ink washes where, you know, you, the, the foreground is so tight. You know, that front character, the, the uh, dinosaur is really highly detailed. The uh, the figure in the uh, in the outfit, the this kind of, I can't even tell, is he a robot? Is he a half, is, he, is that his armor? Uh, but, you know, he, that they're in a slightly less detail than the, than the dinosaur behind them, even less detail, uh, you know, hard, solid lines on that. And then even further back, the uh, the background just kind of fades away. So that's, that's really nicely done. Uh, oh, and Chris is saying the same thing. All right, man. Uh, see, we're on the same page with this one. Yeah, it, it is really nicely done. And, and and if you kind of look at it too, even like the you know he's doing a, a lot of action like movement. You can see that makes this uh, like this bottom talon thing just kind of be all nice and blurry. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it's something where you know he's using the Copics and and not relying on uh, like firm uh, edge lines for the for that particular character. You know, he's conveying movement just by keeping uh, that character a little blurry there at the at the base of it. So uh, very nice. Very, it's a spacesuit. Thank you, Samuel. One of these days, one of these days, I'll be able to read more books. I, uh, I promise. That's gonna, that's gonna be one of my uh, uh, resolutions now that I'm down in here in Florida is to read more books. I, I definitely don't do enough of that. Uh, it's well documented, uh, but I hope to. I hope to. So here's another uh, person whose name I'm gonna probably butcher. It's Ciro 
Scognamidlio. Oh, my goodness, that's a tough one. Sco Scone, Scona Miglio. Scona Miglio. All right, I think I got it. They're from Italy, of course, and a member for over 13 years. Our artist on this one is Paolo Basileri. Ba Basil Basileri? Okay. I'm really, I'm having a hard time. Chris, I could have used your help tonight. Uh, Paolo Basilieri from uh, Napoleon Crash. Now, uh, I'm not, uh, probably many of us aren't familiar with this uh, this work or the artist, but uh, maybe, maybe some of you are. I mean, one of the things that struck me initially when I saw this piece was just the the uh, the amount of space in it between the panels, which is very interesting. And the rounded edges, of course, which typically, at least in uh, traditional American comics, we would think that they're telling a backstory with the rounded corners. So who knows if that's what's going on here. But I like the spacing in this. I mean, as far as a visual element, the uh, spacing between panels is really interesting. And, and it kind of helps accentuate the, the scene, not knowing at all what's going on in it. I mean, with the hand, the, uh, the, the bent over figure that's lifting something up, uh, you know, and then just the silhouette of the character. I mean, it's those three center panels are really kind of powerful just because they have so much space around them that they're, you know, they're, you can, your eye really can kind of rest on those things without like jumping around, you know, with a, and maybe if they were, if things were a bit tighter. So I think it helps us focus a bit more on them. Uh, but the line work in here is just really gorgeous. And, and, and the smoke around the background, I mean, as an element carried through all five panels, that's really, really neat as far as a way to tie the whole page together. And, uh, yeah, I really like that too, well, and 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 even the all the, the silhouette. I mean, I, everything about this page is actually really, really interesting. The more I'm looking at it, I mean, the only the only spot where you see something that has uh, any anything of like detail outside of the silhouettes is whatever's whatever that is right in the corner there. But uh, but yeah, I love it. I mean, even even on his back, there's uh, more detail. But nice piece. I don't. I know I did not see this one on calf when it came up. Uh, yeah, and just like Chris just said, it's very stark. Uh, and how graphic it is, 100%. Uh, very nice piece, and I'm kind of curious, is there other artwork on the site? Well, 140 pieces, okay. Clearly this is an artist that uh, whose name I should know then, because, uh, all right, uh, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna pull that tab and uh, learn more about Paulo here, because, gosh, I mean, even just looking at these, uh, you know, this is how Chris and I spend a lot of time, just looking at thumbnails, but look at, these thumbnails are really, really, uh, I mean, they make me want to look at them. I mean, they're, they're you know, you're just looking at this page here. What is this? Dylan Dog. Look at that page. That, great details on this stuff. All right, I'm going to back that one up and pull that tab over here to look at later, too. Thank you for picking that one, Chris. I always like uh, learning about people I don't, I'm not familiar with. And so, Justin, we were talking about this one earlier, and uh, it was in our uh, recap a few minutes ago. So the uh, Mike, Zach, Phil Zimmelman poster uh a portfolio plate from uh, punisher and i think if i read the description right that uh yeah marvel recently published this image as a one in 100 hidden gem variant covers to uh to number two of a recent punisher series so pretty cool you get a piece that was done and what was the what was the year on this one uh, i didn't check uh, uh 1985 um so you get a piece that's vintage like that and and then to get it used as a cover again later i mean how awesome I mean, everybody dreams of uh, you know getting a commission and having it uh, having it printed one day. And so here you have a piece that was used for uh, for a Zek portfolio, a Punisher portfolio, probably. And then later in life, it's used as a cover again. So yeah, you know, this has everything you'd want in a Zek Punisher piece. Just the super you know detail, furrowed brows like no other. And uh, again, I, I, nobody draws uh, firearms quite like Zek. I mean. Uh, he's just his attention to detail. I mean, this is this is a really really darn awesome piece. And what was the size on this thing? Did did you list that, uh, Justin? Let me see here. Da, 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 da. I do not see the, the size on there. But uh, but yeah, this is a this is a keeper for sure. I mean, I who doesn't love Zach? I mean, we've seen a lot of those. Uh, a few of the recreations popping up of late. I mean, they're they're really there's a lot of demand. For these uh for these pieces by zach so uh 11 by 17 cool cool uh yeah this is a piece i'd love to see in person just just even the detail in the background i mean i love all that splatter stuff going on there the bricks look like bricks i mean again really great pickup justin congratulations on that uh 
you know, it's pieces like those that, you know, are like the cornerstone for somebody's collection. So this is a, a really, really nice piece. Congratulations on that one. And Chris, thank you for these picks. All solid picks. I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to compete with, uh, with your picks this week. But again, just like the week before, there was just uh, a glut of fantastic art posted to, uh, to CAF. You know, easily I could have picked 20 pages last week of, of pieces that I really liked as well. So let me get uh, my 10 pieces here. Uh, where were we at? I know my first one is from Aranga, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Or, not, you know, not by Aranga, but it was in Aranga's collection. I could have picked a piece from Aranga. Uh, I think uh, that piece that Jason got from Aranga, that, uh, that juggernaut holding Colossus's arm was uh one hell of a uh hell of a pickup by uh by jason and great work by aranga who's been killing it lately in his commissions if you haven't been noticing 4c had a had an hour-long segment of uh their sketch con last weekend with aranga i mean he's he's just doing fantastic work and uh, if you haven't commissioned him yet and there's an opportunity he's one of our own so you should definitely consider it but uh let me go ahead and highlight my first piece here so like I said, this one is in Aranga's Calf Gallery. The like on there. Now this is by uh, Pepe Laraz. And <laughs> there's, I don't I don't feel like I don't have to describe anything about why I, I wanted to pick this piece. I mean, I'm not a big Ghost Rider fan, but this thing is absolutely gorgeous. The the flame, you know, the detail in the flame uh, was is eye-catching as far as the, the way it kind of outlines the composition here with the bike and Ghost Rider on it. Uh, it's, lots of fantastic detail in the bike. I love, you know, the tones, the quality of the, the, the gray tones that he gets in here. Cause these are, you know, these mid tones are really hard to get. I mean, I, don't, I, I wish I could actually see, I'd love to see this thing in person just to kind of get a vibe for, uh, you know, how, how exactly it looks. Cause it's, uh, it's really interesting that you, the, the difference here, the differences you see here. I mean, is it all, is there pencil in, in here partially? Is it all ink? Cause it just feels like he's probably doing a lot of both like pencil undertones and then ink washes on top of that to achieve the look in the bike. And even on the character, um, it's, uh, it's just, I mean, I, I'd love to own this and I don't own, I don't think I've ever owned a piece of ghost rider art ever. Uh, Oh, you think it's zip -a tone, Chris? So it's zip -a tone on top of whatever tonal stuff he, he was doing. So that's, that's cool. Uh, uh, people are doing some pretty amazing stuff with zip -a tone anymore um yeah that bike wow says general sign <laughs> exactly and yes welcome to hell love the sign but uh but yeah this thing is just i mean just look at that thing that, that is absolutely absolutely gorgeous so um just like mike callahan said yeah uh, i'm i'm in 100 agreement not i'm not, I'm not i don't dislike ghost rider i've just never really uh uh you know been uh too too big a fan of uh, him to uh, buy any of his artwork Bootlegging says, is Pepe uh, piece not digital? No, uh, not that, uh, let's see, it's all pen and ink. And it is a Vengeance Forever cover. I'm sorry, I did not mention that. Uh, let's see what Aranga says. He's, uh, he's slowly built up his resume at Marvel till uh, he went supernova on House of X, stamped himself out as one of uh, the definitive X-Men artists the last couple decades. His comic work weaves in and out between mostly digital interiors to some traditional covers. So hard to get is an understatement. Uh, when the cover was teased, he was floored. He was downright ecstatic when he managed to nab it. Uh, he's really happy, uh, clearly, and as well he should be. I mean, uh, actually, I want to take a look at one of the published pieces here. So the coloring is actually pretty darn good on it. Does not overpower the piece at all. That's uh, that's nice. Um, but you know, the cool thing, I mean, is uh, talking just about it being a piece that Arango owns. I mean, you know, he's he's gotten a an, a lot of nice uh, pieces in his calf gallery over the last year. And that's got to be really helpful for, for him. I mean, as he's, he's like honing his own uh, craft to be picking up these pieces of art, he gets to see, you know, firsthand pieces of uh, people he admires and how they do their thing. I mean, that's just got to be inspiring for him to just keep pushing himself and, and getting better. And, uh, you know, and I think Aranga's work is like, dramatically improved and uh, since I started following him and, uh, and and maybe in part from the pieces he picks up for, for his collection because uh, he's just got one hell of a calf gallery now uh, and much of it has been picked up uh, in the last uh, 12 to 16 months. So congrats on that piece, Aranga. All right. So uh, this one is in, this is Fish's piece, right? Yes. It was in Fish Ben's piece. So uh, this one, I mean, 
I'm, I'm always going to be a sucker for Busema Sin at FF pages. And uh, this one, totally, <laughs> totally up my alley. It's got Galactus on it. Uh, you got the you know Kirby machinery up the wazoo here in this middle panel with the crackle and everything. But uh, I mean, look at it. It's uh, it's just it's it's great. I mean, you don't even you know I don't care that we don't have FF just plastered all over this page um, or even anything major going on in these two bottom panels. This is an overall work of art. This thing is uh, it's stunning. And you know, I, you know what? So yeah, I had to pick it. You know, I can't even say I'm not even a big FF fan. You know, so I can't say it's a nostalgia piece, but but just seeing something from uh, John and Joe uh, from this period is nice. I'm sure Fish, being the cosmic collector that he is, when he saw this piece, he probably knew immediately he had to make it his own. Uh, you know, in general, uh, you know, it's 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 kind of your traditional fare on the panel layout, but uh, but still really nice. I Meaning even this one uh, thought bubble kind of crossing over there to kind of tie things together a little bit, um, but a really nice piece. And Fish just, uh, he keeps impressing with uh, the pieces he adds to his calf gallery. Uh, you only need Galactus, <laughs> says Michael Callahan. Right. Uh, oh, and it was well-priced too? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure it was, but it's a, it's definitely a great piece. And uh, congrats to him for getting it. I think he might have picked this one up from Anthony. Um, I, I remember Anthony telling me that he had a Galactus piece of a piece that I never saw. So I'm going to guess it was probably this one. So uh, since Fish is nearby, he was it was probably to, easy enough for him to go in there and scoop it up. Uh, so going over to another fantastic collection, somebody who I should probably reach out to and see if we can't get on a on an interview sometime is uh, the Steve Lawrence Calf Gallery. I mean, he his he has his own like museum going on here with the pieces he adds in every single week. This is a uh, which guy's pencils, um, does he mention it? I'm not sure who the inker was on X-Men Micronauts from issue two, but I use this piece as the show graphic because, I mean, this is, this as an image for me, I mean, I, I actually super enjoyed the X-Men Micronauts uh, mini series, and this was from issue two. The artwork in it was just fantastic. I mean, and you look at this piece, oh man, I mean, I I, I would kill for this piece. It, it is absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, you know, Butch guys. I mean, I, fortunately, I was gifted a piece of art by Butch. I, I've, it's the only piece of art of his I've ever owned, and I've never owned anything close uh, to this period in his career. But I would love to. Um, just this. I mean, for the for the time period, this is just a really unique piece. Uh, I can't say anything more about it other than that it's just uh, I'm envious. <laughs> I'm envious of Steve Lawrence's collection, and uh, uh, this this one's as Jeff Wedding said. We can all say baller on this one uh and yeah i mean it is i mean I, I'm just, I could stare at this piece all day long it is that nice um yeah yeah so but steve lawrence i mean he can he he's been adding like a piece a day for the last two months right and every single one of them just uh is one killer piece after another and all from from certainly many of our sweet spots as far as collecting goes you know anything in the early to mid 80s uh, you know stuff uh definitely from marvel for me and um that seems to be steve's kind of uh time period that he uh, appreciates a lot as well you know, you've got an avengers 227 page that he's added recently i mean I, see i mean I, I every day i could go here and find something different in, in his calf gallery i mean speaking of galactus look at this <laughs> ff262 page john byrne holy mackerel this one definitely photographed with a camera. It looks like not scanned, but uh, look at that. You get uh, even you get Mr. Burn in there as well. Oh my goodness! Ah, yep. Steve Lawrence's calf gallery. Uh, he, we're going to give him his own. I'm going to put a like on that one, <laughs> even though I uh, wasn't wasn't supposed to be a part of the show tonight. But uh, yeah, I love his calf gallery. I'm going to have to reach out to him about an interview one day. Uh, next up. And uh, Carl Sodergren's calf gallery. This is a, a Mike Allred from uh, uh, the mid '90s Superman. Let's see, Superman, the Man of Steel. Uh, this is an interior pinup, and uh, <laughs> I love Allred stuff. He, I, I, I would love to see Allred draw every DC and every Marvel character because his take on each one of them, uh, you know, with his signature style, would I don't care what characters he drew, I would love them. You know, even if I'm not a fan of the character, because his style is, uh, you know, undeniably uh, unique, and uh, his his spin on on carry on, on any character would be fantastic. He could just start drawing 
right now, uh, every other, every character in the Marvel universe and the DC universe, and I'd, I'd be happy to see them all. So uh, yeah, this is a nice piece. I mean, the background's kind of, you know, not a whole lot of detail, but those characters are really, really well done. It's amazing how his style, this is 95. So, uh, you know, we're talking, you know, 27 uh, years or, you know, ago and the style is so consistent i mean the line work the quality of the line is uh you know I, I i could feel like this is something that he's uh you know could have done in the last few years just really really great uh oh general side uh, this was a piece he couldn't pass up uh long-haired soups oh, i didn't even notice that yes well there you go uh everybody liked long-haired soups so uh no this, this is a great one thank you thank you chris yeah this one i i, I hate I can't say anything right now, but I, we may be having all red on sometime in the near future. I do hope that uh, that works out. Um, I was even emailed by Simon and, uh, about an hour ago. We were just, it just kind of came up in conversation about uh, maybe doing something with Mike. Uh, we were, you know, Mike was actually the first guest that we had on the Comic Art Live Con, the first one we did in May. He uh, was interviewed by Simon. It was, it was it's so, you know, it wasn't, it was nothing that I expected. They started showing art from Mike's collection. Didn't you know? They talked a little bit about his career, but it, it more focused on uh, the, the kind of artwork that he collected and liked. And it was one of, you know, even to this day, probably one of my you know most enjoyable show uh, uh, panels that I that we've ever done. And it was one of the first. And it was and it was one that uh, you know Simon and and Mike have a good rapport, you know, being rep and artists and everything. But it made for a really enjoyable chat. And uh, Simon did a great job talking with him and, and Mike. Mike showed off some fantastic work. So uh, next up is a piece from Joseph Melchior's collection. And uh, he, this one, he, uh, you know, Joseph obviously has in, impeccable taste. He's, you know, every piece that he adds to his calf gallery is, uh, is an A plus. I can guarantee you, I can already tell you that, you know, I've already made the show thumbnail for next week and I'm using Joe's Brian Bolland piece that he added this past week uh, as well. You know, similarly shaped, a, a very, uh, you know, DPS style image, but, uh, but yeah, I saw this one. It's from Sandman too. Um, you know, I, I did read, uh, you know, Sandman before the show came out, but, uh, this was a, a really, really well done piece from the, from the show, uh, and very similar to this, but I just, uh, you know, Sam Keith early pieces by him and Dringenberg. I mean, what more can you ask for in this DPS? And I should just click on it, shouldn't I? Okay. Um, it's just, the detail on this thing is gorgeous. And I love the panel layout, even though, again, it's back to, you know, we're, we take a non-traditional panel layout and he balances everything out really well with the lights and darks from the, uh, you know, the, the upper, uh, I guess I can circle them here, you know, from the, the dark here to the weighted dark here. And he's just done a really, a very, you know, interesting way to kind of handle this. So you're, uh, it, it makes it cohesive, even though the panel layout is very, uh, not not ordinary and very you know in a weird way kind of like the piece that nick picked up uh in the heritage signature auction as well although that was canted and kind of tilted a, a different way the same kind of experimenting going on with panel layout uh in that page uh, in that dps you see you you see going on here as well so just a fantastic piece and uh you know um joseph's calf gallery is one that i, I go back to a lot he's of course the owner of brit comics art so who made an art drop today? For those of you who didn't see it, there were a couple of nice Frank Quitelys that sold in it early on that I noticed um, that I would have probably would have enjoyed picking up. I think there were some Brian Ballin prelims and whatnot. So if you didn't go uh, to Joseph's uh, dealer website today, you should you definitely should check it out after the show or tomorrow. Uh, BritComicsArt.com. So nice pickup there. And let me get the like on it so I don't forget. Uh, a couple more pieces here. Five more to go, and then we can call it a night. This is in George Hodge's calf gallery. Javier Hernandez Guerrero. This is a commission from 2021. Uh, oh, it's not clickable. Well, that's too bad. But uh, the image is big enough to see it. I love it just because this was a this is a really bad a Wolverine, isn't he? Uh, I love the style. Love the love the the fact that uh, you know the angle from the back. I just think it's it just portrays the bike really cool. I love the X on the gas tank. Uh, it, you know, and all this is it, is it, uh, it is pen and ink. Okay. I wasn't sure. Cause it's, it's, it's so light, you know, if this is pen and ink. The detail on this thing must be amazing because it, to me, when I first saw it, I thought it was all pencil, like heavy pencil and maybe a little bit of ink, but, uh, for it to be all ink, you just look at the, uh, you know, the, the light touches here in the background, 
to the to the to the work that's done here on the on Wolverine's jacket. Really nice, highlighting the the claws and the fists there. You, you know, even though there's all this uh, you know darkness around them, really really cool piece. And uh, you know, again, an artist Javier Guerrero. I'm not uh, again. I probably should be familiar with them. I'm not. Uh, but I just thought this piece was really nice, and it's it's kind of drawn in a uh, you know the bike at least I could say is you know it's kind of drawn in that 70s uh, you know that goofy car style you know where you're you kind of draw the wheels and the the gear shift and you have the monster sticking out of it. It's just a fun drawing overall, even though it has this heavy sense of foreboding about it, right? You know, with I don't know, with Wolverine in front of these uh, werewolfy looking creatures, just really nice. I mean, you know, he's distorting the the figure in different ways. I mean, that's a pretty flat head on, on Wolverine, but it makes him look tough and like an animal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just really cool. So uh, congrats to George on that pickup. I mean, it's uh, very nice. Uh, oh, Chris Stevens says, that's a good point there. Very reminiscent of Sam Peace Wolverine. Yeah, I can see that too. Bad to the bone, <laughs> says Marcus. Yes, I'll, I'll agree with that. Uh, yes. Yes, let's keep the likes rallying, says Nick. Thank you, Nick. And thanks for 70 people being in here to watch me on a Friday night. I really thought I'd get done in an hour, but once it, this is where, where we have our most fun is talking about the artwork. But uh, we only got four more to go here. Virgil Finley is somebody who I don't pick too often, and I don't highlight enough things from Doug Ellis's uh, calf gallery. I've had Doug on for an interview. Just, you know, Doug, uh, you know, Doug actually has, uh, if you're into this period science fiction fantasy and pulp art kind of uh, from the 40s 50s 60s uh doug actually has a mailing list that he puts out for uh for those who are interested you can email him through his calf gallery uh he regularly has art for sale he i guess i think he gets a lot of estate consignments and whatnot i'm sure he gets the good pieces first but that's kind of the the you know the nature of the the, the business but uh but uh, this finley's i mean i love finley's work and this thing is just, I mean, you look at it. I mean, it, it, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, he's doing, uh, he's doing many, many artists had to look to uh, Virgil's work and been inspired by it, whether it's Mike Mignola, Art Adams. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the list goes on and on. But the, this thing is, what I can't even tell you. I mean, so many things are, are great about it. The lighting behind the, the female figure is fantastic. The, the treatment to these, uh, the cityscape behind him uh, that he's just done on these crazy cross hatching groups is you know, unbelievable. Uh, you know, I'm sure this was just like a spot illustration in a, in a pulp storybook, but th the amount of effort and detail into this thing and all those, uh, these little crosshatch stars on her is just unbelievable. I mean, it's, I mean, the more I look at it, I mean, I, I'd love to see this piece in person just to, just to, you know, gawk at how incredible, I mean, this takes talent to sit there and be able to tie all the, this line work together. You know, not many people can do that. And, uh, you know, he's he's using these single sets of lines to portray once you know one uh, tone, and then different uh, you know crosshatch to, to single sets to uh, in, in other places. This thing is it's just it's just outright amazing. And shoot, man, Robert Crumb would look at this and be proud, right? I mean, look at the you know the ink work right in the hair uh, to the way he's drawing this. I mean, this is like an etched an etched penny, right? I mean, it's it's the thing that we see on uh on cast coins and things like that is the type of work that went into this piece by finley i mean it's holy mackerel i mean <laughs> i mean but again i'll go back doug ellis has one hell of a calf uh, collection that he's got on display and uh you know his home is like a museum too so if, you, if you've never spent any time in uh uh his calf um you know please do that and if you're at all interested in this period of artwork hit i don't know if he promotes it but uh you know, let me see. I'll just, I'm just kind of curious what he's, does he mention anything? So he has no intro description. All I can tell you is Doug has a very special mailing list. He does a really good job on it. It's only four times a year where he, he sends an email out, but he, he will, he links to a PDF where he puts together, you know, uh, his own little catalog for pieces. And he usually has anywhere between, I'll say like 50 to 80 pieces in each of those uh, art drops that he does. But there's always some really interesting gems in there. And uh, and I always find pieces from artists that I'm not familiar with. Um, you know, and not all of it is is work that I want to buy, but it's just cool to see. And so if, you, if you're interested in, in this kind of period of work, shoot uh, shoot Doug and El, uh, you know, Ellis an email through his calf. Tell him I sent you and that you'd like to be on, on the list added to his sale list. So uh, great piece there. And now this one. Uh, you know, I had uh, the Neil Adams family on uh, Monday with Rich Cirillo manning the camera for them. 
And this is from Rich's Calf Gallery. And, you know, this is, of course, a nice Galactus piece. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I wanted to find something from Neil to feature tonight just because I, I did have a really nice conversation with his daughters on Monday. But when I stumbled on this piece from uh, Rich's collection and just reading through it, uh, you know, he, he was, his description is, uh, as he's always mentioned, I've always loved Neil's rendition of Marvel characters. Here's Neil's homage to Jack Kirby's Galactus, complete with the signature Kirby uh, crackle. And Rich, Rich had the honor to fill in the large black areas on this piece for Neil, including the crackle. So it's a special collaboration for him to have been able to work on this piece that Neil had uh, started for him. And, you know, Rich is a artist in his own right, as uh, probably many of you know. And so I think that's cool. I mean, Rich had a special, you know, being able to be a part of the Adams family and the things that they did over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, they, I'm sure they were very, very close. I mean, and Rich was, Rich was all, you know, he, he had helped Neil out a lot. I mean, he, he was always helping him at New York. So again, they had a really great relationship. And I think it's pretty cool that, uh, you know, as an artist himself to, to get to take a piece that, uh, that Neil started for him and then handed it over. And I'm, I'm assuming the piece I'm looking at right here was uh, how he got it from Neil that, uh, you know, he took this piece and then uh, did all the, uh, the, the ink work on it to put this together. And I just think that's great. You know, the, it's, it's just a part of our hobby that, you know, things like this get overlooked, the, the rela relationships that some people get to have with their, uh, with the creators that they love. And, uh, you know, Rich had that, and now he has this piece of art in his cap gallery and, uh, congrats to him on that. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm so uh, I'm so glad that you're still able to help the family out, uh, you know, with the live streams. And I'm sure you do a lot of other things for them as well, Rich. And uh, so Rich isn't here tonight, I don't think. But I, I hope he I hope he, he, he sees that uh, we featured his work for him tonight. So, uh, yep, totally makes it uh, it's a good story. And I like to highlight those as much as I, li I like to highlight uh, good artwork as well. Um, so this one is, uh, let's see, who's Calf Gallery? Oh, JN80. JN80's got a really awesome Calf Gallery. If you haven't checked it out, let me get my like on that one. This is a, it says Wolverine Bar Story Splash uh, from Wolverine issue 25, Milestone issue 2022. So a very current piece, one. Foray, Foray, Ra, Foray, Ra. Okay, I'm, I'm sure I could have used Chris's help for that one. Uh, you know, this one was just, a, I thought the style on this thing was just really interesting. I mean, uh, you know, the background, it, all this kind of wood grain that's going on in there that just where it's kind of washy blending into the character. Uh, you know, again, as I've always highlighted, I like things that don't follow traditional panel layouts to tell a story. So I like that uh, you've got uh, Wolverine, you know, probably at a bar somewhere pounding a few. And, you know, within these imageries here, you're getting uh, different aspects and time periods from Wolverine's uh, uh, life. Uh, you know, the, the last panel with Nightcrawler ha clearly having a bad day uh, at the bar. Uh, Wolverine, clearly, he, he's he's doing all right. Um, I, I liked Colossus behind the eight ball. I mean, it was just a, a fun piece. It made me smile. I read through some of the comments. So, you know, everybody was lamenting poor Nightcrawler having, a, having to uh, try to keep up with the Wolverines drinking at a bar. He, uh, you know, he didn't make it through the end of the night. But, uh, you know, a fun piece here. Just uh, very interesting and uh, not something that I'd, uh, I, I, the way it's drawn and illustrated, I'm just, it's not a, not a technique that I was really used to seeing. And I just want to see these color pieces here. So yeah, it's just still different. I mean, I'm not quite sure why the choice of, uh, you know, doing those kind of squiggly right lines around it, but still really cool, really unique. And, you know, anything that kind of changes, uh, you know, challenges our, our impression of what storytelling should, should be like, uh, and where well, that's his, I guess that's what he had on his uh, uh, Instagram or wherever, right? Or maybe uh, maybe that's his Facebook. Hard to say, but uh, very nice piece. Very very. It has a liquid look. Yes, <laughs> you're an elf. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yes, exactly. Uh, that is probably exactly what Wolverine said to Nightcrawler when he saw him down there. Um, <laughs> instead of a bamf, it was barf. Yes, exactly. So fun piece. Again, I, you know. Sometimes that's all it takes to make a piece special is to make you smile. And uh, and this one certainly did. So uh, congratulations on that pickup. So uh, my final pick, and uh, this one was actually featured on CAF as well. So I probably shouldn't have picked it. But, you know, I, I'm a, I, I got to hang out with Sergio a little bit on Saturday. You know, not as much as the 4C guys. But, you know, it was fun having him and Brian Bolland on the same uh, live stream with me. This one, you know, you've got Gru 
uh, Usagi, Yojimbo, you got Cerberus and Ninja Turtle on this piece. Uh, and then just all the classic, you know, Sergio characters that we all kind of, you know, love just the way he just kind of crams all of this activity all into one. But, you know, for me, it was that having the four characters together on this piece was, uh, was, was special. But again, just Sergio's touches here, you know, the, he, he typically did, a, you know, this kind of tonal blue stuff on a lot of pieces, but it's nice how he kind of accentuates uh, and defines uh, the separation between the main characters in the middle and then the, the menagerie of, uh, uh, of attackers coming in from all angles. Uh, again, only as uh, Sergio could do it. So just a fun, fun piece. And, uh, you know, Sergio's style is, uh, is so unique. I mean, that Ninja Turtle, drawn like no Ninja Turtle we have ever seen before, but it doesn't matter. It's awesome. It's really, it's just so darn cool. So, uh, you know, what can I, Joshua Evan, I mean, I don't know if Joshua's here tonight. He's usually in a lot of the chats, but uh, a great pickup. And uh, I wonder what size this thing is. Oh, no, no notes on it. Okay. Be cool if this thing was a little oversized, right? 12 by 18 or something like that. But uh, fantastic, fantastic piece. So uh, he's even got the spotted dog in there. Yes, he does. Um, so uh, yeah, right right there, biting, biting. Uh, I don't know, what is he biting? Wow, he's, he's, uh, he's a good attack dog, as you can clearly see. So, uh, so there you go, there's my picks for tonight. I hope everybody appreciated them. Chris did a fantastic job on his picks as well. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad everybody was able to tune in tonight to, to kind of make the show work out well for a Friday. Uh, it was definitely fun. Uh, I'm going to be at it tomorrow at 2 p.m. with Mike Oming. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. This will be the second show I've done with, with Mike. So, uh, you know, I haven't really kind of thought about what I want to talk to him about as far as the, the part of the in, beginning of the interview. But again, the art he's brought is all great. And uh, more than half of its covers, again, uh, from Powers. And the, he's got that Black Panther one. Uh, there's actually a Madman piece that is published. It's it's funny. It's it's almost like the cover to the. Uh, it's from this 20, 20th anniversary Madman book that Allred put out. But it's so it's almost like the the cover image that Mike had had on the book. But it's it was a pinup on the inside. So just really nice stuff. And and he prices this stuff you know very reasonably. I mean I don't know why his market isn't uh, you know much uh, you know stronger. But he has uh, very reasonably priced stuff. And so I'm looking forward to showing that off for him tomorrow and hopefully getting uh, you know getting him a few sales. And that's one of those shows that we're working with Third Eye. So all the art is already in Third Eye's hands. So. The, uh, you know, the pieces will get shipped out right away. You'll, you know, anybody that buys anything will have it by the end of next week. So I always love working with those guys. If we, if I can, if I can, even I would, I would turn over uh, a lot of uh, the fulfillment over to them. If I could get uh, some of the other people I work with to use them because they do such a good job. I, there was, and I forget who I, and I'm sorry, what, during one of the, uh, uh, our last shows, we had uh, those commissions going off and, uh, somebody got one of their drawings. Oh, no, it wasn't the commission one. It was actually from the Ryan Sook uh, sale. Third Eye just, did, you know, they did a fantastic job. They put the they put one of the uh, Hero Initiative coasters, you know, in a in a heavy mylar, you know, in a top loader. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and the packaging on it was just top notch. So you can pretty much guarantee that anything that Third Eye packs and ships is just, it's built to get to you and get to you safely. And... Uh, I don't know how they afford to do it for what they for what they get out of the work that we're doing, but uh, so I definitely owe them a nice Christmas present at the end of the year because they've done such a fantastic job to kind of you know give us a good reputation as far as fulfillment when we do shows with them. So yeah, like Nick said, Mike's pricing is is really great. I mean his uh, yeah, I mean very very fair, super super fair, and he's such a nice guy. I can't, I'm looking forward to chatting with him tomorrow. Um, but again, if you can tune in. Tomorrow, that's great. I'll have Sunday off, and then I'll be back on with the uh, the other sales show with Next Comic Art Monday night at 9 p.m. And then I'll have, I'll have Alan Hamilton. Uh, uh, many of you uh, who've been out to Heroes or San Diego this year got to meet Alan. That was the first time I, I, I met him was at uh, Heroes, I believe. And so we've been, we've been trying to figure out how to get him on the schedule. So he'll be my guest on Tuesday, and I'm really looking forward to that. So thanks again, everybody. Friday night, not our normal thing, but uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. And just have a wonderful evening and a great weekend. And uh, 